The following broadcast is brought to you by the friends and partners of Revival Ministries International. do this right now. How many know what time it is now? It's a time for the ravens to come. Amen. You know, one of the things that the Lord spoke to me about in the open vision that I had was about provision, which somebody said, well, how did he talk to you about it? It's not like a discussion like we have it right now. It's like you just knew. You just knew. You knew things. And one of the things that became very evident to me was that for a split second, I was in the treasury of heaven. And when you realize what a treasury is, it has the full supply. And that God has a full supply for his church, for his people, and for ministries and every endeavor, whatever, if you're a business person here, whatever. I mean, if you live on the earth, you're going to need a supply. God has a full supply for you from now till he comes. Are you with me? So it's not like you're going to get to the other side and say, Lord, you had a supply for so long and then it ran out. The supply that God has never runs out. There is no end to his supply. And the Lord wants his people to trust in him. Sweet, I'll come join me up here. God wants his people to trust in him and to believe in him. Many do not trust in him. They trust in chariots. They trust in horses. They trust in, you know, Wall Street. They trust in everything of the flesh. And in order for you to tap into this abundant supply, you have to transfer your allegiance you have to transfer where you're putting your trust in. So one of the things that we endeavor to do here is to educate and train everybody where your supply actually is coming from. It's not coming from man. It's not coming by the hand of man, but it's coming by the hand of the Lord. So maybe you're struggling with some things here today. Maybe you're watching, you're struggling with some things today. If you'll take your eyes off of what you thought was your source and put your eyes on Jesus, you're going to watch what's going to happen. Even this very next week is going to be a supernatural week of provision in your life, in your home, in your marriage, in your ministry, in everything that you touch. Can you say amen? 3 John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So God's plan for us is blessing. Amen. From the beginning to the end, everything he created, he's, he blessed it. He, he did not curse it. He blessed it. Amen. We are the ones that put ourselves under the curse, the curse that came about with Adam and Eve when they betrayed the Lord and they listened to what the devil said, a curse came upon the earth. But we have the choice through Jesus Christ. He came to restore the blessing. So we have a choice to live under the curse or live under the blessing. The Lord gave us that choice. How many of you know that? He said, I've, I put the, you know, let it rec be recorded before heaven and earth today that I'm, make, I'm making you make the choice. You make the choice. I'm offering you healing and blessing and all my goodness, or you can choose the curse, it's up to you. And he said, but he said, choose life, choose blessing. Choose it for you and choose it for your children. Choose it for your seed, choose it for your posterity, amen. amen. And so God wants us to love him, serve him with all of our heart and obey him. Because when we do that, we bring ourselves in a position where he is free to do what he wants to do, which is to bless us, amen exceedingly abundantly bless us. When we look at the, um, the uh, Old Testament, oh my goodness, um, all you see is 
disobedient people and a good God, really. And then you see them serving the Lord, and you see God's blessings upon them, and then you see them get full of themselves and then go off after the flesh and go after um, all kinds of stuff and forget the Lord, and then the curse comes upon them again. And then the Lord comes back and reaches out to them, and he had so much patience with them. Oh, my goodness. And thank God he has patience with us too, but we shouldn't try his patience too much. We should rather, amen, we should rather live to please him and live to serve him, not live on the edge of how much can we get away with and still make it into heaven, right? right? That's not what we want to do. We want to serve Him with all of our heart, we want, and we want Him to know, and we need to know. There's some things that the Lord asks of us, not, not for His sake, for ours, so that we know, amen, that we have a point of contact, something that He requires of us to do, like with Abraham, and He said, offer up your son, your only son, and there was multiple things going on with that, and part of that was a covenant deal that God was making with mankind to send His son, His only son, but there are things that God asks of each of us, and we need to know that we are free to give it. We need to know that that thing doesn't have us. We need to be able to know that Jesus is our first love. Amen. Because Jesus said we can only serve God or mammon. We cannot serve both. We can't go 50-50. We can't go 80-20. We can't go 90-10. We can't even go 99-1. We have to make a decision. I'm going 100% for the Lord. And everything I have and everything I am belongs to Him. And when we give ourselves over to Him, then He begins to extravagantly and abundantly bless us, so much so that it makes the heathen jealous. Amen. Don't let that bother you when they get jealous. Just smile at them and say, Do you, would you like some of this blessing? You can have. Let me tell you how to get it. Amen. So never be ashamed of God's blessing. And we can't brag because it's none of us. It's all of Him. We just humble ourselves under it and, and just appreciate it because everything the Lord does, He does exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. And we, we, yes, we do not deserve it, but God doesn't bless us because we deserve it. He blesses us because of who He is. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, obviously, there are keys. There are things that we need to do that either hinder the blessing or activate the blessing in our life. And some of it is our, in our actions of giving and sowing, but a lot of it has to do with our expectation and our faith. And so we need to always wrap our faith around everything that we do. We need to, everything we do needs to be from a heart that's obedient to the Lord and submitted to Him, not for any other ulterior motive, because God looks on the heart. Amen. And in Haggai chapter 2, is in the same chapter where he's talking about shaking the heavens and the earth and the nations. And he says in uh, verse 18, consider I pray you from this day onward. Now he's dealing again with, with people who are, have been in disobedience, but he's telling them, consider I pray you from this day onward, from the 24th day of the ninth month, even from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was relayed, consider this. Is the harvested grain any longer in the barn? As to the grapevine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, the olive tree, have they not yet born? But from this day, I will bless you. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus said, today is the day of salvation. God will bless you today, not tomorrow, not sometime in the future, but He will bless you today. And the thing that is so awesome about the Lord and so powerful, I was just talking to Pastor Rodney about it this morning, is that the moment that we make that decision to come in line with His Word, the moment we decide not to run out of church when they start talking about tithing, but to say, Lord, I commit myself to the tithe, amen, because we want to keep our tires, but anyways, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but I commit, Lord, I commit to you. I commit to tithe. I commit to give. I commit to be a blessing to others. Everywhere that I go, I commit to be a blessing. And it's amazing. The moment that we even make the decision to do that, the blessing of God begins to manifest in our lives. The Lord says we can pray for seed. If we don't have seed, we can pray for seed to sow. And God will give you seed. He says, I give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So if you don't have anything to give, you have no excuses. Because you have to say, Lord, I don't have anything. I need some seed. And the Lord will give you seed. Don't eat your seed. Sow your seed. Sow and bless. Amen. If it's not enough to meet your need, it must be seed. Just, just sow. If, if, you're, if you hit a, a, a wall, feel like you hit a wall, start sowing. 
Just start sowing, just start giving, just start releasing it. God says, from this day, I will bless you. And then in, in Nehemiah, so we just got through Nehemiah 8, right? Talks about the, um, where they got hit with, all, with the, everybody got hit with the joy, the Feast of Tabernacles. And it goes on in, in chapter 9, it says, now on the 24th day of the month, again, as Haggai was talking about the 24th day of the month, the 24th day of the month, the Israelites were assembled with fasting and sackcloth. So they begin down, I'm going to run through because I don't have time to read the entire thing, but feel free to read it yourself or take, take it home and read it, chapter 9. You'll be blessed. And, and uh, in verse 6, it talks about, well, verse 5, the Levites. And Ezra stood up and he said, You are God alone. You've made the heaven, um, the heaven of heavens with all the hosts, the earth that all, all that is in it. You preserve them and all the hosts of heaven worship you. So they're telling in the verse before, the Levites were telling them, Stand up and bless your God from everlasting to everlasting. So they're exhorting the congregation, stand up to your feet and start lifting your hands and start worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. Why do we lift our hands? Because the Bible tells us, lift your hands. Bless the Lord and lift your hands and lift your voice and your instruments and the dance and with everything. We, we worship Him with, with all of our being and all of our instruments and our voices. We worship Him. Hallelujah. And we worship Him in our giving, and we worship Him, worship him when, we, when we are being a blessing. We worship Him in everything that we do. Right, so they start running through everything that the Lord has done, because they have to remind these people. These people didn't have Bibles, they didn't have printing presses, so they're reminding them what God has done. We need to remind ourselves of what the Lord has done. We need to remind ourselves of what the Lord has promised. We need to keep His Word in front of our face. Amen. We need to keep it in front of our eyes. Because if we don't, the devil's going to come in. He's going to start lying to you. He's going to start deceiving. He's going to start making you doubt God's word to you. You have to keep God's word in front of your face. Hallelujah. And remind yourself of how good he is. They start running. They start going from Abraham all the way through, through Exodus, through the Red Sea, through everything God did, through even how, you know, there are many people in the Bible that are an example to us, not, of, not necessarily a good example, but an example of what not to do. And that's okay too. The, the Bible didn't whitewash anything. It put everything in there. So we can understand that those people were not perfect, like we're not perfect either. But thank God, it's not dependent on us because we've got a good God that's gracious and loves us and is generous. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and even though we don't deserve it, he does it for us anyway, so we can just humble ourselves, rejoice, and praise Him every day. And so, it talks about how they acted presumptuously, and they stiffened their necks, and allowed pride to come in. But verse 19 says, in your great mercy, you forsook them not in the wilderness. And then verse 20, I love that. You also gave your good spirit to instruct them. You gave your good spirit to instruct them, and withheld not your manna from them, and gave water for their thirst. Oh, how wonderful he is. Oh, how patient. Oh, how loving. Oh, how... <laughs> how generous that he is with us. You have to understand, religion and the devil portray God as a mean God that kills and steals and destroys. But Jesus said, no, that's the devil. That's the character of the devil. God blesses. He comes and he gives life, and he gives it more abundantly. Amen. Again, we see not just life, but abundant life, over the top, overflowing. You know, when he said to them, he said, I will bless you today. There was a, there's a rhythm of, you know, all of the, everything they did was obviously uh, farming and animals and the earth. And, and, you know, we've been removed from that in a sense of just living in concrete cities and getting our food from the supermarket. But they understood that they needed God's help for the harvest. They needed God's help in everything that they did. And the Lord told them that every seventh year they were to rest and not plant anything and let the earth rest. Well, that's God created this whole earth and he knows how it works. And he knows what we need to do. And then, and then the 49th and the 50th was Jubilee and so there was like a double year. And do you know that the Lord every time would provide in that year before, provide an, a double portion for them so that, that they would lack nothing through that year that they left the land alone to, to recover itself. 
before they even did it, not after, before they did it, God provided. God always goes out ahead of us. We're always following him. Isn't that awesome? Before they needed it, it was there. The Lord will bless you with things before you need it, it will be there. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then on that day of Jubilee, the year of Jubilee, he would supply two years worth, and then they were obligated, everybody that owed them anything, they were to release them. He was demonstrating to them his character of how he releases, how he forgives. He doesn't hold anything. He, and they were, even when they did lending, they were to do it with no interest charged. They were to lend from the goodness and kindness from the heart and not charge interest. And that's how things should be. So you know when people are charging interest, they're a bunch of heathen, and they're treating you like a bunch of, like the enemy. <laughs> Amen. Because it's not right. Somehow the Lord blesses and multiplies when we do that, and we honor Him, and we honor His Word, even though it doesn't, might not make sense, financial sense. Hallelujah. And so He talks about how, in verse 23, how they multiplied like the stars of heaven. And He said... They went in and possessed the land, and then, verse 25, they captured 45, fortified cities in a rich land and took possession of houses full of all good things, cisterns hewn out, vineyards, olive orchards, and fruit trees in abundance. So they ate and were filled and became fat and delighted themselves in your great goodness. But then he talks about how they, they were disobedient again to him and what he did about it. He gave him into the power of the enemy. But in verse 33, it says, however, you are just in all that has come upon us. You have dealt faithfully, but we have done wickedly. So they acknowledged that they were in the wrong. And then verse 38 says, because of this, we make a firm and sure written covenant of our princes, Levites, and priests set their seal to it. So they have all these 112 heads of the, uh, all of the houses and the, the representing the families, and they make a solemn pledge to the Lord. In verse 35, we obligate ourselves to bring the first fruits, this is chapter 10, we obligate ourselves to bring the first fruit of our ground, the first fruit of all trees year by year to the house of the Lord, as well as the firstborn of our sons and our cattle, as is written in the law and the firstlings of our herd and flocks, to bring into the house of the Lord to the priests who minister in his house, and we shall bring the first and the best of our coarse meal, our contributions, the fruit of all kinds of trees, of new wine and of oil to the priests, the chambers of, into the chambers of the house of, the, of our God, and we shall bring the tithes from our ground to the Levites, for they, the Levites, collect the tithes in our rural towns. And the priests, the sons of Aaron, shall be with the Levites when they receive the tithe, and they shall bring one-tenth to the house of the Lord, to the chambers in the storehouse. For the Israelites, the sons of Levi, shall bring the offerings of grain, new wine, and oil to the chambers where the vessels of the sanctuary are, along with the priests who minister, the gatekeepers and singers. We will not forsake and neglect the house of the Lord. So God said, this day I will bless you. And they said, Lord, we make a covenant with you. And that's what they did. You notice everywhere, when they came back to God with their heart, they came back to God with their money as well. Amen. When they came back to God with their heart, they came back to God with their money and their possessions. In the, in the book of Acts, they got so full of God that they gave everything away. But you know what? You never have to worry when you give everything away. Because in the world's economy, you give everything away, you have nothing. In God's economy, when you, have, when you give everything away, He blesses you back 30, 60, and 100 fold. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that there can never be any lack, never anything missing, never anything lacking in your life when you honor Him and you honor His Word. And I want to I share a couple of scriptures with you. So since we were talking about a fat land and, and um, wells digged and vineyards and olive trees and fruit in abundance, that means God wants to give us something that's our possession, not just renting. I, I, know, I know there's a lot of financial advisors telling you right now, it's not good financial sense to own property, just rent. It's always financial sense to own property. It's not financial sense to be in debt. It, it's, it's, it's financial sense to not owe anybody anything, right? But property is a tangible asset that you have, and God promises us pro property. So why should we be stupid and listen to the world's financial advisors and not own property? Own property. Put your faith out for property. <laughs> Buy land. Start off small and believe God to grow it. 
Amen. But be a good steward of it, and it'll multiply for you. Hallelujah. Don't listen to the world's financial advice. Listen to God's financial advice. I want to read some. This is actually from the Living Bible. But verse Jeremiah 32 to uh, 32, 40 to 42 says, I made an everlasting covenant, promising never to desert them, but only to do them good. I will put a desire in their hearts. I will rejoice to do them good, all the good that I have promised them. And then verse 43 to 44 says, Fields will again be bought, deeds signed, sealed and witnessed, and I will restore prosperity to them. Hallelujah. That's a promise to you. Fields bought, deeds signed, sealed and witnessed. I will restore prosperity to them. If you need God's help in the area of property, if you need your mortgage paid off, if you need, if you believe in God for land, God will bless you. That is your promise. It is yours. Hallelujah. You can claim it. You can receive it because we can have what we believe. Amen. Hallelujah. So we need to give. We need to sow. We need to today make a commitment to God. Lord, I'm going to sow. I'm going to give. I'm going to bless. And I'm going to trust you that you are faithful to your word and that you are going to do this for me and for my, fa my, for my house and my family. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's almost like you approving the word of God for yourself so that it's not just something that we're reading here, but you've actually proved it. You tried and you proved it for yourself, which I believe the Lord wants to do for each and every one of you, even as we close out May and we go into June, which is humble month. <laughs> Amen. Because all the pride, prideful will be brought low in June. Are you with me? But so let's... Let's pray right now. How many are believing God for some big things here this week, closing out the month? Who's believing God for property to come into your hands? You heard the word of the Lord here. Yeah, sell everything, go live in some rented place to save money. That's garbage. You're not saving anything. Are you with me? Get your own place. It's yours. So let's believe God for that. And land is going to come into your hands. Vehicles, vehicles, people needing transportation. Amen. So let's believe God for miracles right now. Father, thank you for your people today. Lord, each person totally different here. The needs totally different here. People are believing you for big things, expecting big things from you because of your word. Your word told us we could. Your word showed us that we could. So we didn't start this, you started it. I mean, I'm not trying to be rude, Lord, but you started this stuff. <laughs> you told us to put your word to the test. You challenged us to believe you for the impossible. So we're just taking you at your word. So, Father, we lift up every single need here under the sound of my voice, those that are watching by way of television, and I pray for blessing to flood their life, that this week shall be a supernatural week of the blessing of heaven coming upon them, overtaking them on every side for their business, for their home, their marriage, their ministry, whatever they touch shall multiply. And we thank you for that. We speak increase. We speak multiplication on every side. And we thank you for it. And we are expecting. We're expecting this week for an overflow. We're expecting an overflow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And we call it in from the north and the south and the east and the west. We thank you that angels are working, that even right now the ravens are bringing in the provision supernaturally. And we thank you for it. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching today on YouTube. Please press the subscribe button and also the notification button and like and get the word out so others can watch.